awesome. Oh, right here. <laughs> Make a fine good life. Let me see. Let me join. Did you, did you figure it out? Uh, yeah, kind of. Was it hard or what? No, it's not hard. I'm, I'm just not really into this. I, I don't do this, so how would I know, you know? Uh, oh, my God. We're, we're live now. We're, we're live now. Yeah, I know, but I don't, I don't normally do, uh, I, I don't normally do this, so I don't know how it works exactly. Okay, so we're, we're live now. I'm recording it. Okay. So how are, how are things in Germany right now? Uh, pretty, pretty normal, actually. It's, um, they started quarantining, like, I guess over a month ago, but uh -huh. it ended, it ended today. Not a hundred percent, but like uh, like at least one third or fifty percent, I guess. So now, um, like all the regular shops are open and all that stuff. The only thing that's not open is clubs and uh, and uh, I don't know some little things, you know, movie theaters and stuff like that. But uh, right now, everything else is open. Are you sorry? Are you are you going back to work since it's open? Well, I don't work. I'm in, I, I mean, play in the band. I'm a booking agent, and uh, because of that, all of the uh, all of the clubs are closed. Uh -huh. Till I, I guess till when are all the clubs closed? Till till the end, end of right the now, end of August, July. August. Yeah. I don't know if you saw this article. But I don't know if it's true or not, because there's been so many different news. People have been sending me a link. But this is like California. We cannot we cannot have cons concert or something unless like they come up unless the vaccine comes out or something like that. So those, there's no concert this year. Well the entire year. Well anybody who gets a vaccine is mm -hmm. insane. I'm just gonna tell you right now. First off, Bill Gates is behind this vaccine program, and not only just Bill Gates, it's um, it's the Rockefeller Foundation, and you know it, you, you you don't have to do much research on the Rockefeller family <laughs> to see that they are corrupt, evil family. <laughs> but Bill Gates is just as corrupt and evil as anything. They're not doctors; they have no. No knowledge of being doctors, but they're financing um, vaccines. And this is even worse, yeah. is in 1986, they passed a law under Ronald Reagan that vaccine companies cannot be sued for anything. If you die, you get sick, uh -huh. you cannot yeah. sue them. And this is a fact. You can look it up. Uh, instantly, 1986, the uh, you cannot sue vaccine companies. So they can poison you, kill half your family, and there's nobody can do nothing about it. Hey, just I have a I don't know too much about vaccines and stuff, but just a quick question. But what about in the old days? Didn't didn't vaccine cure um, some of the like different viruses and stuff that human beings? To be honest, I'm not really sure even if that's true at all. I mean, I know I had a polio virus, uh, vaccine when I was in the 70s, you know, and I know that uh, I know that uh, Bill Gates did a polio vaccines on people in uh, in India just recently, like in 2017, and he uh, uh, it was polio. It was polio. He did polio vaccines on people in India and mostly children and he uh, he basically handicapped them all of them almost what? all of them is this recent in the news or? 2017 in India well nobody's gonna talk about that anywhere first off the mainstream media in the West is controlled by these private elite companies and lobbyists like people like People like Bill Gates, you know, people with a lot of money. They just pay off everybody, say, shut the fuck up. Here's some money. Here's some money. So they don't say shit. And most of the, and most of the, uh, the media in the United States is either partially controlled by 
the CIA or 100% controlled by the CIA, like uh, CNN. Like the main guys that work for CNN are actually CIA operation guys. That's why it's so funny. And I'm like, that guy is from the CIA. And most CIA guys you don't know, but there's some guys you do know. And um, most CIA guys are like James Bond. They're, you're not supposed to know who they are. They're, they, they're just secret agents that work for the United States government. But unfortunately, most of these secret agents work for, not for the U.S. government, they work for somebody above the U.S. government, like the Federal Reserve or, uh, or secret, uh, secret uh, societies that control even the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve. Hey, back, back to Bill Gates, didn't Bill Gates, like, um, say something like his kids didn't get vaccinated, or was that a fake website? <laughs> Somebody said oh, I am I'm a hundred percent sure of that. He would I mean, definitely it's... not have his kids get vaccinated. In fact, most of the doctors who do recommend to give vaccinations uh -huh. don't vaccinate their kids. They know that it says when you get vaccinated, all you have to do is just read the contract. They'll they'll give you a piece of paper and read it. Just read it. It it might take a long time. Or why don't you just tell the guy well, before I sign this, let me take this this contract home and review it for a little bit, and I'll come back to you, and we'll do this thing. But if you read it, it says that they cannot be liable for you to get sick or anything else because they already know that vaccines are questionable at the least. Okay, um, so another documentary I was watching, I forgot about it, but they were saying that that's, that's, they were saying that vaccine does work, but a small, just a tiny, tiny, small percentage of people will get sick or die or, or some, something like that. I don't know. But, I mean, it's possible, it's, uh -huh. but I just, so, I just don't think the human body was born with an immune system, and I believe that our immune system can protect us against most things. And if it doesn't protect you against most things, then you can use nature, natural remedies, you know what I mean? Like our ancestors did, you know, like our ancestors had like all kinds of remedies, like tree bark or whatever. And, and these things have been proven that work actually. So the pharmaceutical industry didn't like that. So they just tried to crush it. They, they crushed it and they said, no, 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 that's illegal. And then they, they produce a chemical version of the same thing. I See do, what I'm saying? I do remember oh. reading the article about um, a few of the natural remedy doctors disappeared and stuff. I do remember that. Tons of natural you remedy could, doctors. You could Google it. You the Google ones it that speak out against Big Pharma get, get uh, slammed by the media mm -hmm. saying they're like, uh, you know, snake oil salesmen or whatever. But the truth is, they're not snake oil salesmen. They're selling na natural remedies that our ancestors have been taking for thousands of years. Now, what is, what's that? Then all of a sudden, oh, my, my, my beautiful remedy that I concocted with laboratory scientists is the only one that's recommended for you. And then the FDA, oh, it's not FDA approved. The FDA is bought out by the pharmaceutical industry. Nothing they say is true. Nothing. Zero. They say that uh, they say genetically modified foods is good for you. That's what the FDA says. The FDA says that Monsanto's pesticides don't hurt you at all, but we already proved that they kill people with cancer and all kinds of crap. And then they stick you, the FDA says, oh, the uh, chemotherapy, that's really good for if you do get the cancer, but over 60% of people who take chemotherapy die. And the people who refuse it live longer with, with cancer than the people who get chemotherapy. So you see what I'm saying? And then it costs 8000 bucks every time you get chemotherapy. So it's a cash cow for them. They don't care about you. They don't care about nobody. And the U.S. government... <laughs> Forget about it. The government is bought and paid for by pharmaceutical industry, by the Federal Reserve, 
keep in mind, I know I keep mentioning the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve is not owned by the United States government. And if anybody thinks it is, they are completely delusional. It was founded originally by J.P. Morgan, uh, for, you know, the Morgan guy who owned the Titanic and everything else that you can possibly think of as a disaster. He actually founded it. He's the one that came up with the idea to put a central bank in the United States. He pushed it. He, he caused local banks to collapse so he can force it on the U.S. government. They funded a, 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 a basically a, what do they call that? They just basically funded this fucking guy that will do whatever they want for president, which is Wilson. And they got Wilson in. He signed the act on Christmas Day when nobody was even in the office and they passed it. Of course, because there was nobody there. And now we have a, a privately owned company printing money out of no, out of thin air. There's no gold back. There's no nothing. There's no, no backing at all. They're printing money. And what they're doing now is they're buying up mortgage securities and everything else you can think of. They're taking all of the, the loans that you, like if you bought a house and you had a, you still paying uh, mortgages on your house to a bank. They're buying those from the bank, and now they now you're paying the Federal Reserve directly, and it, and if you don't pay, the Federal Reserve will directly kick you off that, and the Federal Reserve will directly own your property, and now that's what they're doing. Now at this point, the Federal Reserve owns sixty to eighty percent of everything in America at this point. Mm -hmm. That private company owned by super sick ridiculously rich billionaires that you never even heard of uh, all kinds of families. Yes. The Morgans are in, in it. The Rockefellers are in on it. The Rothschilds are in on it, but there's also the bin Laden, uh, the bin Laden families in on it. Mm -hmm. The, uh, this uh, family house of Saud, the Saudi Arabian Royal families in on it. I mean, this is not just, uh, certain families everybody always heard in there the you know the the comment that oh the Rothschilds are behind everything well actually the Rothschilds have pretty much stepped back they haven't been kind of stepped back since after world war ii they haven't really invested in much since then probably because they got what they wanted after world war ii but uh uh but the other families are still very active the royal, the royal family of Saudi Arabia, they are very active, and they, they invest in America. And they want their money, and they, they, and they put money in the Federal Reserve. Uh, they bought the stake in the Federal Reserve, and they want their money. That's the whole bottom line. And there's even more people. There's even a Mexican family who has stake in the Federal Reserve. They're all getting money. They're all getting paid. So when they buy out everybody's land, they own everything. Mm -hmm. A private company owns everything in america i know lots of people try to say blame it on china mm. not ch china china sells a lot of products in the united states but they don't own land but this is totally uh, different aren't america in, in, was in debt to china we owe them a lot of money and stuff well it's because we trade with china we uh -huh. we trade with china we only but this is goods we owe money for goods like we owe them one point six we were, we were, billion or something in goods because the United States doesn't make anything anymore. So the little bit of things that we have, we trade and they don't match up with the with the Chinese trade. The Chinese are giving us truck they're giving us truckloads of goods while we give them a shopping bag full of goods. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's a completely different ballpark. America doesn't make anything anymore. Uh, ever since, um, really, ever since Ronald Reagan, but but where it really amplified was when uh, Bill Clinton was in office. Everything was sold out. They sold out every company. Uh, Bill Clinton signed a lot of really ridiculous contracts. I'm not saying Bill Clinton made these contracts up. He didn't. Somebody else did. He probably didn't even know what he was signing. In fact... I'm positive he doesn't know what he was signing, but he probably didn't care. He says, well, whatever. It's not my problem. 
if American people get screwed because I'm rich. You know what I mean? Uh, but he signed off a lot of stuff like NAFTA deal and all these other deals and sold off, and all the companies left. They left America and they went to China and Mexico or wherever else for cheap labor and pretty much almost slave labor. So, you know, uh, I'm really, I can really only be disgusted by what really happened. It's pretty disgusting. Um, but, you know, American people didn't complain and they let it happen. So there it goes. And they say, well, we can't do it. Our government's in charge of that bullshit. If you ever read the Constitution, it says that the people are the government. So if you have a problem with the government, you take up, even if you have to take up arms, a well-armed militia to take down the government, you have to, it's your right to do so. Even the U.S. government knows this, but nobody did it and nobody cared. And now the, the U.S. is over. It's, it's done. It's gone. It's over. There is no more United States anymore. It is owned by the Federal Reserve and private companies. And in the next couple of years, you won't even have a constitution anymore. And this is a fact. It's <laughs> over. There's no way out of it unless the United States people rise up now. You're not going to get nothing. Excuse me. But if you wait three or four more years, you wait it too long. You will never get it back ever again because they're going to bring in foreign troops, foreign government people, and they're going to say you have no right to anything because this isn't even this isn't even owned by the United States government because the United States government sold it all to the Federal Reserve. So it's all over. It's pretty much over. I mean, you might as well just say it's over. I mean, uh, I doubt the United States people will fight because they're scared. They believe hype. They believe the media. They believe this, you know, this bullshit the CIA has been doing since the 60s to brainwash you into believing the U.S. is like the freest country in the world, although they're completely controlling everything. And we have a police state. I don't think it's going to come back. I think it's over. Game over. I think if, unless something happens in the next one to two years, it is game over for the USA. I mean, and well, of course, you could always have some country like China or Russia or something like that come in. But, well, you already know what China is like. Uh, I don't think you want that. I've been to Russia many a times. I love Russia. It's a great country. And I've been to China many times. The people are sweet as fuck. But the problem is the government is fucking even worse than the United States government. But the United States government is emulating China right now. They want to be an authoritarian government that controls everything and every aspect. Russia right now is freer than the United States. And that is a fact. And if you go to Russia, you will see it right off the bat. I have a question. You were saying that um, people in the United States are not fighting back, but this is going to sound weird. Um, yesterday and two days ago at different states, all the Trump supporters are coming coming out and doing all these protests against the lockdown. And, and one city, they came all armed with all the uh, guns and every, every, everything. And well, I know, but they're fighting for the wrong reasons, and they're, and they're not really fighting. They're protesting. Protesting, but with all the they were armed, too. Yeah, yeah and they were pro they're armed, but they're not attacking anything. Uh, they would have to attack. I mean, the only way it, it, the only way it's going to happen is that you're going to have to be like, you know, at this point, I would assume you would have to be like uh, uh, Fidel Castro or something, you know, do a well-armed takeover. I have a question. You've been sending me a lot of, lot of link with all kinds of stuff. Like some of them, I, I didn't even read it because it was just too fucking mind blowing and crazy. I don't know what to, what is real, what is not, and stuff. And, and then you sent me a, something. You were saying that you were saying something like it didn't come from chi China. I don't, I don't get, I don't get it. Can you explain that? 
And where, uh, where do you get this information from? Because you were saying well, they did I, not got, kind of I was on tour. I was on tour in in, in uh, October and November in South America. And then when I got home from tour, I got a message from some friends of mine in China. It, I got the message like a week earlier or something. I think it was like the end of the end of November uh, that there was a weird virus going around that the some doctors were saying there was like SARS and I was like that's weird and um and uh they sent me this message and uh, and I was like well that's weird they said that it's kind of like getting really out of hand in China in Wuhan and uh and they uh I didn't pay much attention to it and then like a week or two later I got a message again saying that uh uh that uh, a bunch of doctors are saying, well, first off, I got a message from a friend of mine who said his sister just died from this virus, well, died actually a week earlier, but just died from this virus, whatever it was. And uh, at that time, they didn't have a name for it, so they were just calling it SAR, like SARS-like virus mm -hmm. or coronavirus. Um, and I didn't know what that was, but... And they said, why? I go, why did she die? And he goes, well, she was working for this laboratory in Wuhan, China. It was like a biotech laboratory for like uh, viruses and stuff. And that she got infected by one of the samples mm -hmm. on accident. And then they quarantined her for two weeks and she died. And I was like, holy shit, really? And, um, but the thing is, uh, they, they they immediately, when the state found that she passed away, they immediately grabbed her. They were all wearing those suits, you know, those those white suits and the mask and all that. And they grabbed her, and they took her to the morgue to get cremated immediately. But they dropped her off, and her body off, and didn't tell anybody that she died from this weird virus. And... Uh, some people speculate, including my friend, that maybe the virus started there. But he has no tr he has no proof of that. The, but the only reason why he speculates on it is because they didn't tell anybody that works at that crematory that she was infected with some weird virus. So they're like handling this body, you know, for you know for a matter of time, and then sticking her into a crematory. So they don't know. It could have happened that way. But then at the same time, there was this weird military drill going on the exact same week with the United States. Because this, this virus was a joint operation with, uh, with the United States, Canada. And uh, it, it was supposed to be not really a virus, like a biotech weapon. It was supposed to be investigating on uh, researching on how bat viruses can transmit to humans. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to understand how it is. So at least that's what they were, the, the laboratory people were, and the researchers were under the impression of. But I think that it wasn't that. I think that they were using it as a biotech weapon. They just didn't want to tell the, the researchers because why would a researcher want to make a biotech weapon out of a bat virus? You know what I mean? Um, but let me just say that Originally, the research came out of the United States. It came out in uh, North Carolina, and it was moved to China because there was a, in 2015, there was some kind of weird thing where there was a bunch of people complained about it. So Barack Obama said, well, we can't deal with this and ended the research. But uh, Fauci, the, the uh, Dr. Fauci, the guy that you'll see all over the media in the United States, was supposed to be the leading research, sent this research straight to China, Wuhan. Um, he's the one that did it. And that's the weirdest thing about it. And now he's the head guy for this. And he's the reason why we are on lockdown, is this Fauci guy. This, um, he, uh, but there's something weird about this guy that, uh, that doesn't make sense. And actually... There's a lot of things weird about this guy because I found out he was in charge of the AIDS thing, HIV AIDS pandemic in the 80s, and he was also part of the swine flu pandemic, 
and he was also the blue bird flu pandemic. This guy seems to be always involved with all of these really horrible things, but he seems to be be involved with them before they even happen. What's his and full name? So I could Google it. Uh, somebody wants to Google it. What's his full name again? Uh, what's his name? Fauci. The Doctor Fauci. What's his full name? I don't know. I don't know. I'll just. He's a guy. Is Fauci and AIDS. You all you have to do is go on law, uh, All you have to do is look when you see this, this skinny. He almost looks like he's Italian looking guy standing right next to Donald Trump with white hair. Anthony Fauci. Ant Anthony. Oh, somebody will Anthony. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta look look it up. He's with Donald Trump every day. Um, he was with Bill Clinton. He was with uh, uh, he was with Barack Obama. There's he was with fuck. He was with Ronald yeah, Reagan, he was with George Thank Bush you. Senior, George Bush Junior. This guy is a government. He basically is a government doctor, which means he's full of shit. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? He only he works for the big pharma companies, and he's actually tied with the. Uh, he actually is directly working for um, the Rockefeller Foundation. And Bill Gates is also working for the Rockefeller Foundation. So you can just say the Rockefeller Foundation, Fauci, and Bill Gates are all the same. Hmm. They're all working for the same cause. They're making a pandemic so they can make money off of your suffering. and They're making you scared of something so they can sell you a drug, sell you pharmaceutical bullshit, and even when they don't sell it to you, they sell it to the hospitals, like those stupid ventilators and those um, and those other things that they're selling to the, uh, the test kits and all that. They're selling all that. They're making trillions of dollars on this, by the way. And the ventilators don't work. That's what I'm going to try to explain to you. If somebody old gets gets coronavirus, do you mean not those masks, right? The, they put this fucking hood over them and yeah. they yeah. push oxygen in their throat. Because <laughs> the first thing old people get is pneumonia. Or, or they might already had pneumonia and then they get the virus and it double whammies their ammonia. And all this does is their lungs fill up with, uh, with fluid and the ventilator just pushes the fluid into their lungs harder and then the lungs rupture and they die. So the ventilators don't work bottom line they work maybe for other kinds of illnesses but not for this illness now what works for this illness well there's a bunch of doctors that have a lot of different uh different uh ideas but one thing they did notice is common is lots of vitamin c for some reason seems to uh boost the immune system or something and the body is able to fight it off because our body has an immune system, we are able to fight off most things. And keep in mind, the human body has millions of viruses inside of it all the time, 24 hours a day. Uh, germs, germs and viruses are not our enemy. Actually, most of the time, they're our, our saviors. Mm -hmm. uh, I know lots of people want to believe that they're our enemies. They're totally wrong. There is some germs and viruses that are not good for humans, but most germs and viruses are good for us. Um, they, they're the reason why we're able to fight off, fight, fight off sicknesses, um, uh, lots of stuff. And actually, that's, that's funny that you say this, because coronavirus seems to look I, – I was doing some research on the coronavirus, and then I found out about this thing called exome, and I never heard of exome before – but apparently it's a, it's a virus a human body creates itself, mainly in its lungs. Our lungs creates a virus called exome, so fight off pneumonia and all that. And this virus looks exactly the same as a coronavirus. Not, not somewhat the same. It looks 100% the same. And so it, it's like kind of trippy because some virologists are wondering – Wondering if, if if the coronavirus is nothing but your own immune system fighting against itself. 
But your own immune system wouldn't fight against itself unless there was another toxin involved in it. I mean, now, I, I just we can only, can only speculate on that, but 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 it is a theory, and this is a theory by doctors, not by me. Uh, I didn't come up with it. I was actually blown away when I saw that. I do know about exomes, but I didn't really know anything about them. But now I found out that they are the they're there are life saviors. Like if you get pneumonia, that's the main reason why you'll survive pneumonia is from these virus that your own body created. But it looks exactly like the coronavirus. Same size, same and that's another thing. Keep in mind, um a lot of people are running around wearing these weird masks and stuff, homemade masks and bandanas over their faces and all that stuff. That stuff doesn't work. The viruses okay. are so small, they're like less than, they're like like a quarter of the, not even a quarter of that. They're like, they're so small that they can fit through anything. So. I have a question then. Quick question. You said it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, then why are the nurses in the hospital using those well, masks? If it they work? were surgical masks, and those masks block by vi uh, viruses and bacteria up to 30, 35, 38 mm percent. -hmm. But they don't work. They don't work more beyond that, and they change them every couple hours. If you don't get rid of, and they literally destroy the one before that. A couple hours later, Keep destroy talking. I'll it. be right back. Okay. <laughs> what about these? Yeah, those are the M95s. Yeah, the N95. Those ones only, like the said, they're... See that. See that. Ones only like the said, they're the same as the uh, same as the surgical mask. They last only a couple hours. The the problem is is that uh, viruses build up on the outside. Uh -huh. They'll they're like they like land on it on uh, like dust. You know what I mean? And they they land on your because they're like dust, but they're even smaller than dust. They're like micro 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 fine dust. And then they stand on there, and then they start to work their way through the, the grains of the fabric. Uh, and the M95s only have like a 38% uh, prevention rate, but mm -hmm. only for a few hours. After that, they don't have any prevention rate. Most N95s, not one single company on the planet Earth, including the ones that make the sur surgical masks, will ever tell you that they prevent any virus at all. And you know why? Because they don't. Mm -hmm. Because if they told you they prevent uh, they prevent viruses, you could sue them. And they don't, they since they know they don't, they won't put that. But they, what they will tell you is that they will help you prevent from germs spreading into you and dust and pollen. And keep this in mind. But they don't, they won't stop a virus. But they will slow it down. That's all they will do. Mm -hmm. But you have to change them. You have to change it every couple hours. You have to get rid of that mask or, or somehow clean it. But I don't know how you can clean it because they can embed themselves. The virus can embed itself into your fabric of the, of the mask itself. I read it but online. Other handmade masks, not 1% chance. You might as well not have a mask at all. Actually, mm -hmm. Uh, no mask at all is better because the problem is, is like if you wear a bandana over your face of a virus dust flows onto it, it will stick to that bandana and then you'll breathe and it'll suck it right into your nose. At least when you're, when, when you have nothing on, it won't stick anywhere. It'll just kind of like bounce off your skin and float away and you have a better chance. But with those bandanas and fake masks, a t-shirt over your face you're basically making the odds of you getting sick 60 times better <laughs> i'm not even kidding this is not my science this is what doctors and real researchers are i don't care what these fake doctors the the um that uh that the government hires 
talk to real biologists, talk to real doctors, I'll tell you. And just even read the goddamn mass companies. Go look on their website, say, do you stop viruses? They'll say no. They said, we cannot guarantee that. That's what they'll tell you. And now for all the other masks, like like uh, spray painting masks and all that, they, there's absolutely, they don't even stop pollen. The what only thing they stop chemical Military masks. Masks. Cool military uh, masks. Yeah, well, that stops. <laughs> Obviously, that's not, that's why I made a joke. Say, wearing, I don't know if you looked on my profile, I had a diving suit, like a yeah. 18th century diving suit. So obviously, if water doesn't get in, then it obviously stops air particles and getting in. Yes, uh, gas masks work, of course. Because we order two. Uh, we order two of them. <laughs> well, there was this really cool one that I was looking at, but I'm not worried about it. In Germany, nobody wears masks, um, except for sick people and and some elderly people wear them, but nobody wears masks. But people uh, are actually dying. Yeah. Even on my Facebook, like punks are punks are like posting stuff. Rest in peace to somebody, their friend, and one person hashtag. People are actually really dying too. It's just crazy. People, yeah, I know that, but I I understand that. But to be honest, uh, to be honest, I I don't know what to say, but. Every year of my whole life, I've seen lots of my friends die, and well, that's they true do too. All yeah. kinds of reasons, uh, all kinds of reasons. You know what I mean? I had that's, friends die that's from pneumonia. I had friends die from the flu. I had friends die from drug overdose. Well, a lot friends of our die friends, friends die from drug overdose. Not, not. I had tons of friends. I mean, I don't even know what to say. Car accidents, cancer. Uh, I, I think people right now are just at this point where they're like so paranoid that they're noticing everybody who dies mm -hmm. when before they're like, well, you know, that sucks. And my buddy died. Um, but like I, it, in my lifetime now and me and you, cause we're almost the same age. I've had at least 50, 60 friends, personal friends that died. Mm -hmm. And the last 30 years, or 40 years, you know, and uh, uh, I, right. I don't the like people it. We met I don't like it, it, but what can I do about it? You know what I mean? I can't help it. I can't help them. You know, I tried to help some of them. The ones that were on drugs, I, I tried to coach them out of it, but it obviously didn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah, I felt they didn't bad want to change them. Well, I felt bad about some of my friends that were heavily drug addicts, you know, and I, um, I constantly badgered them. I said, dude, get off that shit or you're going to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck it, man. Who cares? We're going to die anyways. This is the kind of That's attitude these people have. And then they die and then and I'm like, and then people are like, dude, are you sad? I was like, why should I be sad? I already knew they were going to die. I kept telling them they were going to die, and they didn't even listen. They ignored all my warnings. Yeah, live fast, die young. Like, you, remember, you remember Kim Davenport, in particular? Remember also, her? Also, Ron. Ron, also, too. Oh, Ron, yeah, yeah. That's yep. another story. A lot of our friends died of drugs. Like. Dude, that's what I'm saying. That's Maybe right. Rest in peace. Oh. Of course, but yeah. I, can't, I can't help when people – don't listen. You know what I mean? There's all, there's always a rip. Bottom line is there's a remedy for almost everything for the most part. If you can, if you can just listen, I mean, I think you're going to, I don't trust doctors and I never did. And that's why I don't go to doctors. I have free medical insurance here, dental and mental uh, medical here in Germany, in Germany. Yeah, but I don't, I almost never use it. Who <laughs> just like saying, "Hey, go to the doctor. You're coughing, or you're this or that." I'm like, I don't want to go there. I hate the doctors. Uh, it's the truth. I hate doctors. And then you're allowed to go to a doctor's office. They really send me back because of my. Well, I'm just saying, I don't go to the doctors normally. It's very rare. The only time I'll go to a doctor's is when I 
I, ne I know for a fact I need antibiotics. And I said, I need antibiotics. And I said, Uta, can you call your doctor and see if she'll just give me antibiotics? So no, he needs to go in. I'm like, why do I need to go in? I know what I got. Well, no, no, you don't know what you got. And I go, yes, I do. And they're like, no, you don't. And I go, yes, I do. And I go to the doctor and I tell him exactly what I got. And they go, well, we need to do some tests to figure that out. And they do the test and they go, oh, shit, you do got what you said. <laughs> I'm like, duh, I already told you. They go, how did you know you had that? And I'm like, dude. I'm, first off, I'm forty, um, almost forty nine years old. Second off, I I research things. I'm not stupid. I can read books. Most of you doctors, see what I'm saying? That even explains it. Most doctors don't even know themselves. They say we need to do some tests, and then I'll get back to you. The reason why they do tests is because what they're going to do is they're going to go back to their medical books and open them up, and or scroll online and try to figure out what you have. And I'm like, wow, I could have did that myself. <laughs> some, some doctors do say that, but it's true. Most doctors, a lot of doctors don't know like the whole like nutrition and everything, how the food's killing people and all that too. That well, they, a lot of them are, don't care. They're just lazy. They went to doctor school and, and uh, medical school and the medical school preaches them that they should be pumping drugs down everybody's thing, working for big pharma. You know what I mean? And, oh, well, we recommend when this person is sick like this, use this Pfizer drug or use this whatever drug or use this Johnson & Johnson drug. It's like, what? Uh, isn't there another way other than giving them drugs? Oh, no, no, no. We recommend this. It's like, no. Nah. And that's why some doctors are – some real doctors are pissed at the medical industry because – because they swear an oath to help you uh, to be, uh, you know, that to be honest and help people. And then they, they, they knowingly give you fake drugs or drugs that possibly could cause more complications or even kill you by itself. And that's why I said, like in the United States, um, especially in New York, they've been dumping those ventilators on people who are having breathing problems and they're killing them. Uh, with this coronavirus thing, and uh, to be honest, dude, Big Pharma yeah, I think is killing. I think Big Pharma is Big Pharma has killed a whole lot of people, bro, on this coronavirus yeah. thing. And, and the same thing in New York, and, and not New York, in Italy. In Italy, Big Pharma dropped it on these old people; their mm -hmm. lungs couldn't handle it. These ventilators, and it killed them. And uh, that's exactly what happened. That's why it's not happening here in Germany. Go look at the deaths. Uh, uh, the the if, go look on the map for online mm -hmm. how many people die in Germany. You'll see that we have the lowest amount of people that died in the entire world for the amount of people who have been certified sick. So. Sorry about that. Hey Billy, delete that comment, man. I was laughing because fucking Billy. <laughs> He's crazy. Billy's crazy. Anyways, hey, so what, what's your opinion about this whole lockdown? In, not there, in America, though. Do you think lockdown is helping? A lot of people are losing their job, job and stuff. And some people no, say lockdown not, does save lives. It's not, it's not helping. Um, it's not helping. Um, what, what would have helped? This is exactly what they should have did. Okay. They should have took people that have extreme bad health, health conditions that they knew right off the bat based off of what happened in Italy and the United States. And they took the people that are elderly and the people with bad health, obesity, lung problems, stuff like that, and they put them in quarantine. And the regular people just go about their business because the regular people – uh. I'm going to just tell you right now is if the study that they just passed in fucking, uh, I'm sorry. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, they just did a huge study in Northern California right now. And they just completed it. And I sent you this, um, I didn't huge. Hear it all, Cause you were sending me all kinds of stuff. No, the last one, Stanford university. No, I didn't, Stanford I didn't that. Oh. did this giant test 
They they screened thousands and thousands of people. They did blood tests from them, and they found out that a huge proportion of the people that they did the tests with had already had coronavirus and they didn't even know it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why you kept te- testing me that. We have coronavirus, yep. all of us. I'm telling you right now, dude. You text me that. that at, this, at this rate, they're saying that they believe at this point 50 to 60 percent. Okay, I don't know how many people have uh, uh, classified as coronavirus in in the United States, but in Germany, 150,000 people have been certified to have coronavirus. 150,000 people in Germany Uh have had had have or had coronavirus. Well, what this study proves, or what they what they theorize, is that that is 50 times to 80 times more than that. So that means that 6 million to 10 million Germans have already had coronavirus. USD, USC testing, so, so Rams 80 is saying USC testing, sorry. Well, I'm just telling you. So the United States, whatever the number is of how many people that have coronavirus in the United States, Count that 50 times or 80 times. I just find that crazy. It's spread all over. Like to it, Europe, it is, Italy, it, everywhere. All different countries. It, it's faster. It's more yeah. contagious than the flu. It works way faster. And it, it it's just spreading like a wildfire. But the good thing is that most people who get it build antibodies to it. And when you get your antibodies to it, if it ever comes in t- contact with you again, it will probably most likely not affect you whatsoever. Actually, the majority of people that have gotten it, they weren't affected anyways. That's what I'm saying. For you, particularly, Jay, your health is spectacular. It probably You would even notice it. You might even already had it. You might have got it in January and you wouldn't even have noticed it. You might have had a little runny nose. Or, oh, I might have a little cold. And then that's I, it. I, I did have a runny nose a month ago. A month ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, maybe you should go to the doctor and say, hey, I want to test my, uh, my – get a blood test and test my antibodies if I had coronavirus because I bet you they'll say, holy shit, you had it. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it, Jay, because me and Utsa probably already got it too anyways. So there it is. Sure, at it. No, we already know we had it because Uta, all of her colleagues got it too. Before it came out. Before it was even in the news. Did you guys? Yep. Get, is it? Did somebody get tested, or is this a fact, or you just guess? Yeah, it? some people got tested. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. we got tested. But everybody got sick at the same time with the same exact symptoms. I heard like, it was Scarlett. Yeah. I forgot the doctor's name, but. I heard like some of the tests are not accurate. Is that true? They're not hundred well, percent. The, the, the tests that they do, where they stick that swab in your nose. Yeah. Uh, that thing only has a twenty percent accuracy rate, Damn. and that is what's the point that of doing that? Everybody uses. It's called the RSPT yeah, but test or something. In Germany, the results you get two weeks later. So. <laughs> yeah, but that test is is always like only twenty percent accuracy. It doesn't mean anything. Because the problem is, is that uh, it only tests for inflammation. And the uh, inflammation, you can get inflammation from anything. If you got pneumonia, if you got cancer, or if you got anything. So that's another problem that they're having, too, is that that even though they say oh, 450,000 or whatever has it in America, they don't even know for sure that they really have coronavirus. Uh, that's a problem because... Those tests aren't accurate, but nobody cares, and nobody even wants to check because they don't care. And they and maybe they don't. It's not maybe they don't just care. Maybe they just don't have the resources to even be able to figure out if it's really coronavirus or not. Because uh-huh. I mean, telling you right now, those tests are not accurate. Everybody knows it. The doctors know it. You can look it up. They have a test positive uh, results of only twenty percent accuracy. That's that's terrible. That's that's be pathetic, actually. How can you claim that somebody has coronavirus or some disease with that kind of accuracy? 
So you you really think it came from like a lab, but not a not from a wet market from the animals and stuff? No, I don't think so. You don't think it came uh, from the lab? No, not too. Uh, in fact, there's there's almost no chance that that's possible. They always have those wet markets. First off, the virus isn't even the bats that you'll find in a wet market. They're not those bats. These bats are exotic bats. Uh, they're called like the pink nose bat. They're very exotic. They're very hard to find. And the, the only the the only people that were playing with them was that lab in Wuhan. Uh -huh. They're the only ones. So they're playing with this exact exotic bat DNA, and and their virus is from that exact bat. And this DNA, uh, this virus is exactly that virus that they're playing with. So the chances of it being from the wet market is zero, and absolutely zero. Was Beijing won a lockdown? They didn't do a lockdown in Beijing? How do you pronounce it? Beijing? It wasn't in Beijing. It was in Wuhan. No, no, but they didn't do a lockdown there in Beijing and all the other big cities. Wuhan was the only place locked down. Yeah, pretty much. I'm going to Google it right that. now. See well, if it was weird because the virus actually broke out in November. And, and China knew about it. The Chinese government knew about it. Like I told you, my buddy's for, uh, sister passed away. In Wuhan, so they knew about it in November, but uh -huh. they didn't even acknowledge anything until somewhere in December. But they never told anybody. They never reported to the World Health Organization, but maybe they did. Actually, I think they did, but World Health Organization ignored it. Um, and uh, in the, until like somewhere in January, actually, it was kind of weird. It was like a huge cover-up for something. I don't know why they were covering it up. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but there was a cover-up for for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. The whistleblower doctor disappeared, too, from China. The first whistleblower doctor. Yes, I know, dude. I got an email from him. He, he vanished immediately. Well, actually, he resurfaced like three weeks later, and then he vanished again. He, I have to do something, dude. He vanished again uh, in early, sometime in mid December. Oh no, mid January. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I have to plug in my phone because it's dying. <laughs> okay. Oh, they, they did a lockdown. They did a lockdown. Well. No, I don't know if they did or didn't. I I'm not I there. I've been to China. I've been to China many a times. I, I think it's a amazing place. The people are amazing, and um, God, we were supposed it's, to go to China this year. We had a tour already set up for September to go to China and Japan, and now that's gone. We're out the door, and right now there's a lot of weird shit going on in China. Oh, a lot of my friends are writing me from China and telling me that um, the the Chinese government's blaming everything on America right now. And that they're being really racist against Americans in China right now. Oh, and, and they're well, being racist like towards doing black the same people in China. I saw the YouTube. YouTube. They're, yeah, they're, yeah, I saw it on the YouTube channel. Oh, well, they're doing the same yeah. thing in America, too. They're trying to get everybody right. to hate Chinese people. Right. Chinese people that I have nothing to do with, uh, to do with this shit. This is a, this is a government shit, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. uh, and, I, I have nothing to do with the American government, and I am, and and most Chinese, my friends in China, like my friends, like in gum, uh, gum ble uh, bleeding gums or whatever, they those guys hate the Chinese government, although they can't say it, <laughs> or they will be arrested. He said they're not letting the black people shop. Yeah, that's the thing I saw in the um, news. In oh, China, no. they were worse than really, the black people. Yeah, that they were really bad to black people. They're treating black people the worst. Yeah. Uh, but they're doing the same with Americans. They're calling Americans a virus and all this oh. other stuff. So that's interesting. Uh, they're saying that it came from America. The Chinese people are saying that. Well, I, they're, they're, not, they're not. It from started the truth. in China, though, right? No, it started in America. Wait, what proof or what do you have that it started here, though? Like, because the girl, yeah, it was, I told you that oh, Dr. That Fauci, Anthony Fauci, China? was, they were doing, they were doing testing in America in 2015, and 
uh, for whatever reason, some people complain about them doing this in North Carolina, testing with viruses that are, could possibly leak and contaminate the population and get everybody sick. The Dr. Fauci moved the lab work all the way to China. It came out of North Carolina. He moved to China because the Chinese government don't care. So that's, there we go. So the guy that everybody that's telling everybody to listen to the WHO, listen to the CDC, listen to everything that he has to say, is the guy who's actually is it's his fault, one hundred percent. Doctor Fauci. We're talking to Rob from Total Chaos. He was sending me so many links, and that's what I'm saying. We're doing this live. Asian Americans are being mistreated here in America. So fucking sad. Yeah, I did. I did read about hate crime, hate, a lot of hate crimes and stuff. About well, I'm just crimes. saying in general that Dr. Fauci is. It's his fucking fault. He he's the one that started this, not China. The, the, he, China is also at fault because China let it happen. But but it's his fault. He's the one that was in doing. He was the head of the research of this bat virus shit. It's Dr. Fauci, the guy that's hanging out with Donald Trump, the guy that's recommending us to be locked down and do all this crap. So big pharma and then they can police control us like we're in Nazi Germany or something or in USSR. This is total nonsense. You know what I mean? It's his fault. He's in with he's in on it all the way. He's working for the uh, Rockefeller Foundation and he's also in with Bill Gates. Fuck these guys. They're all rich scumbags. They don't care about you. <laughs> and they'll and they'll have no repercussions. So it doesn't matter how many people die. They got no they they're never gonna pay the price unless somebody does what they did to did to the French people did to King Louis, chop his fucking head off. You know what I mean? Baby Spooky said the Chinese government claimed the US brought the virus during the military drill in November. I didn't. I just I, tell you about that. It's, it's Did just, I not tell yeah, you this? It's just hard to believe everything because there's so many like different information online. Like I don't know what to believe. Well, I'm telling you, my buddy's my buddy's sister yeah. passed right. away. Yes. she was a lab it's worker at that lab in Wuhan. She passed away. Yes. Uh, she got the virus on accident, uh -huh. and they quarantined yes, her, and she died. Yeah. And then she was put away. But uh, and some people. Some people were theorizing that maybe Shit. she was the Wait, reason you gotta why. Call me back. They're going to disconnect.